Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 69. If you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 6. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 6 website. Hey, we're talking about continuous probability distributions. Oh yeah, the normal or the bell-shaped distribution or even the standard normal. We have our example here that we've been working on and we're going to talk about finding areas or probabilities greater than or equal to an x or just greater than an x. Now, based on past data, which we've had in uh, our previous video, we estimate the percentage, um, estimate we want to estimate the percentage of scores on the next statistic test that will be 10 or less. So our x value is 10. We're going less than or equal to. Our mean for this quiz is 12 and the standard deviation is 2. Now before we even go uh, calculate our probabilities, which is how we want to do it, I want to show you how to chart. I want to show you how to chart this. Now we have all of our x's here and we did something similar with binomial, but there's a big difference. When we were doing it with binomial, that binomial function was calculating probabilities. We're going to do it here and we're going to be able to do it given an x and uh, a mean and standard deviation. These are population values, uh, but this will only give us the height, not the probability. Then we'll come up here and calculate the probability. All right, you ready? We're going to use what's called the norm dist equals norm m dist. Now, what is norm? That's normal. What is dist? Distribution. Now, here's what it needs. We're going to need an x, a mean, a standard deviation, uh, and a cumulative, and the cumulative will be as the same as before. So our x will be there, comma, our mean, oh, that's going to be 12, and be sure to hit the F4 key to lock it, because we're going to copy it down, comma, and then the standard deviation, oh yeah, that's 2, so I get that, and then I'm going to lock it, I'm going to hit the F4 key, and then comma, now cumulative, just as before with the binome dysfunction, 1 meant cumulative, 0 meant exact, but here, 1 is going to be cumulative just as before, which we'll use up here, you can see the example, uh, then up here, how when we calculate the probability, ah, but when we use 0, this calculates the height. So here we go. I'm going to close parentheses. I have all the, the dollar signs lock, control, enter. Now I can, I've already made this little template here with lots of values. And by the way, the way you do it is if you're given a 12 and a 2, you just have to go, you know, at least four or five standard deviations below. I went, I went like six standard deviations below. And then like increment little numbers for our x, because this goes way, way down. So I needed to, I went six below, so then I need to go six above too. Anyway, you do one function, then I'm gonna double click and send it down because there's something to the left all the way down. It goes all the way down. I'm gonna control down arrow to look. Oh yeah, look at how many rows it took. 217. That's how we plot, right? x, f of x. Now I'm going to highlight that label and that label and then control shift down arrow to highlight everything. Now this is the first time I think we get to use a, uh, an area chart. Insert. Oh, it's under area. If you have yours expanded, I never have my uh, ribbon expanded, you'll just see a section for um, area. Oh no, there it is. I was missing it. My eyes weren't working. Area, and we just select the first one. Now, right off the bat, it doesn't know what to do. I'm going to click th that right there. We don't want that. So I'm going to click right there and hit delete. Actually, just as before, I could have just highlighted the uh, probabilities and done it that way. Whoa, just like that, we get our normal distribution. Now, I'm going to uh, do a few different things here. First thing is we want to notice uh, this is not right at all. By default it got put in, so we go up to design, as we've done so many times, and this is the magic button for charts. You have the power to select whichever data you want, and sure enough, we have our area. I named it remaining area because we're going to add something later. We're going to add that thing right there. But here, we want to edit this, and then we need to get our values. Oops, I made the cardinal sin when charting. I'm going to have to click cancel and then cancel. You have to move it out of the way like this. Now I can get to my X's right there. So now I click there, design, select, edit, and then I highlight 
click right there and then control shift down arrow to highlight all the way down and then click OK click OK I'm gonna have to scroll up here Zoop. There, that's much better, and you can see that 12 right in the middle there. Now, the other thing I want to do is link this if I can. I have, uh, I want to link it to that. I don't really have a, a cell, I think, over here actually to link to because I actually want the standard deviation and the uh, mu. You could actually just click here, watch this mu equals 12, comma, uh, sigma. Remember, that's the name for that little character in Greek that means population standard deviation equals 2. Now that I've created that right there, you can come over here and click, hit F2, your cursor gets shoved up there, equals, and then click on the cell, cell with your label. You could have easily just typed it here, which you've seen in, in other videos, but the nice thing about that is if I need to change it, it's easier to change it in a cell than there. All right, we're going to come back and play with this, but that's just uh, going to be helpful because pictures really do help when finding areas. All right, now we want to get busy calculating our uh, less than or equal to 10. Now, remember we talked about this earlier. Since it's area, less than 10 and less than or equal to 10, the probabilities will be the same because there's no uh, area for a line. Let's calculate Z first. I'm going to move this down here just a little bit. Z, what is Z? Number of standard deviations above or below. I take my particular x, uh, uh, the mean, and then divide it by standard deviations. What does this really do? The denominator always comes out 1, right? So that says 1 standard deviation, and on top we have a minus 1, which means one minus 1 standard deviation. So that's our z. Now, how do you calculate the probability? We saw the norm s dist for the height, but here's the probability. Remember, it's always cumulative. Equals norm dist, and we'll see how to use all, th all four of these. Norm dist, it needs our x, our x is 10, comma, our mean is 12, comma, our standard deviation is 2, comma, and here, cumulative is 1, just like in earlier chapters when we did binome dist. 1 means cumulative from the lowest to whatever our x is. And there it is, 15.865. So, Based on past data, it would be reasonable to assume that on the next test, there is a 15.87 chance that a score selected at random would be 10 or less. Or you could say 15.87% of all the scores on the next test will be 10 points or less. So that's what we can uh, conclude from that. Let's go over and look at our chart just as we did with binome dist. I want to show you how to add an extra, in our case, area here that will visually portray, right? Less than or equal to 10. Let's come down here. And the formula we're going to use is just like earlier. Watch this. It's the if function equals if. And as what we said about if, you just need a logical test, which is either true or false, some, some task that comes out true or false, and then you tell the if function what to put in the cell of true and what to put in the cell of false. So our test is going to be, is the x less than or equal to our particular x? Now, that has to be locked, so hit the F4. Right, so when we get the blue one is relative, when it, it gets to like the 20s, right? 20 less than or equal to 10, false, right? So right now, what do we want? Is 0 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. So what do we want? We want the probability. Otherwise, what do we want to false? Just like we saw in earlier videos, you have to hit double quote, double quote. That means blank. Excel thinks that of as blank. Now, that one is not locked. If I copied that down, that would be all. Oh, no, that's, that is what we want. Two relatives, one, two. Control enter, and then I'm going to double click and send it down. Now let's scroll down and look. Oh, oh, that is like magic. Excel is like magic. Now, what if we went up and changed that 10? Again, that's why you link everything to cells. What if we changed it to 11? Does our if function update when we come down here? Oh, that is magic. I'm going to control Z. That's cool because it, it jumps you back up there. And uh, 
undoes that. Now I'm going to click here and we go to our same place as always, Design, Select Data. I'm going to click Add. Now the name is right there. The series values, remember what we talked about earlier, that's always a lot of trouble. Sometimes when you try to highlight the range without deleting it completely, it messes it up. All right, and then I'm going to click here and use my keyboard shortcut, Control Shift Down Arrow. Click OK. Edit. And I'm going to have to scroll up the charting. It was it's not being polite there. And there we go right there. Control Shift Down Arrow. Click OK. There we go. So we got it. We got that and then click OK. Let's scroll up and see our artwork in progress. Oh, that is so great. Now, when you're able to do this, now you have a dynamic chart, right? So when you change this to 14, what happens? Boom. Now, so that's less than or equal to. Also, it could be uh, just plain less than. Now, we want to do this a couple different ways. And you can, on the test, I, I'm definitely going to ask you to do it both ways. So I want you to be able to do the norm dist, which means you need x mean, standard deviation, etc. But I also want you to be able to do the norm s dist. Now, equals norm. When you type norm in 2007, you can just hit tab once you find it. But look here. There's a norm dist and a norm inverse. That's when you have the probability and you want to find the x. But it's a M and then D, M and then I. Now look down here, norm S dist. So the only difference between norm S dist and norm dist is there's an S. Remember, standardized. The standardized random variable is our Z. So that's what that means, and that S also. So let's see how to use this one now. Distribution means you're calculating the probability from an X. Oh. It's not an X in our case, it's a Z. And we click right there. Notice it only needs one number. And why is that? Because that Z calculation already incorporated all three of these numbers, an X, a mean, and a standard deviation, whereas the function we used before required all those. This one doesn't, just a Z. So I'm going to click there and Enter. Whoa, we get the same answer. Now. Another way, another question that could be asked is this. If we were given the probability all the way up to here, which is 0.84134, if you say give have all this probability and you want to find the x associated with this, then you use the inverse. So let's see how that works. What is x given some cumulative probability? And we have some great examples coming up here, but just we're going to look at how the function works here. Equals norm s. And there, as soon as you type the s, there's only two of them right there. So we're going to use dist first. Um, I didn't want that. Let's try that again. Backspace, backspace. Uh, I want th this one right here. So I double click that. And what I want is the norm inverse. I'm going to give it a probability, a cumulative, mean and standard deviation, and it'll tell me what x is there. So here's the probability, comma, the mean, 12, and the standard deviation, 2. When I hit Enter or Control Enter, Oh, it calculated from this probability the actual x. And we'll look at examples later. Great examples uh, for, you know, you can think of a, a company that's hiring people. They only want to hire the top 10%. What's the score you need to, to get accepted by that company? The 10% would be the probability, and then the x would be spit out, would give us our score we need to get. Okay, what uh, what z given a z what's the cumulative probability let's do our norm s and that now there's only two of them and i want the inverse one right oh it just wants the probability yeah just the probability it spits out the z all right so uh there, this video was about the less than or equal to we saw how to calculate z we saw how to do the norm dist. We saw how to do the norm s dist, the norm inverse, and the norm s inverse, and how to do a chart like this. 
Now, when we come back in our next video, we'll do the greater than. We'll do all the calculations for above some given x. All right, see you next video.